What's up, guys? I am Poncho Moeller. This is my buddy, Wee Man. Welcome to another episode of Lil Revolution. Hey, bud. How is it? Very, very good, man. I'm very excited <laughs> to be here hanging out with you. I'm excited, it's a too. Good time. I'm, I'm excited for the guest you have brought today. Oh, I'm very good excited. That, yep. that I've been trying to get him for a while now, and finally we were able to fit into his schedule. Uh, he's a really great friend of mine. I've known him for like probably like about six, seven years now. Oh, nice. Um, it's an interesting story how we met, but uh, he is a writer, an entrepreneur. I, I think at one point he was a musician. He's an actor now. Like, I would love to welcome Chaz Bono yeah. to the Little <laughs> Revolution chair. So nice. happy to be here. Thank All you. right, man. Thanks Thank for coming guys. out, Chad. Thanks for having yeah. me. Big fan. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And I was pretty shocked when Pancho told me you guys were friends. And I was like, you're friends with Chaz? He goes, yeah. I go, how'd that happen? Yeah. What a movie set, just hanging out. And no, it was actually yeah, at, it was a, at premiere. a premiere. Yeah, wow, it was at okay. a premiere. So, so um, it was a premiere from the Three from Hell, Three right? from Hell, yep. yeah. And I saw him there. And I was such... I, so I, I, I mean, I hadn't seen, I'd seen him in 31, and yeah. I loved him in 31 so much. I just, oh, really? I just thought that villain that he created, that those juxtapositions of that character and everything, I just, it was, it's, it's, it's still one of my, you know, favorite killers in a movie. Yeah. yeah. So, Thanks, Jess. yeah. So, um, so I went up to him at, at that, and you know, told him, and that was. Kind of that was kind of it. We yeah. just started, you know, becoming friends after that. Yeah, awesome. Were you, were you in that? What's the what was the premiere you guys made? Uh, Three, Three from Hell. Yeah. It was are Rob's, you in that movie? Yeah, it was uh, another uh, Rob Zombie movie. He basically it's a it's a it's a trilogy to the to the Devil's Rejects and the House of the Thousand Corpses. Okay. And so it's it's the the third one, the third and final one. I mean, I don't know if there'll be another one because they do all live in it. Yeah. For okay. the spoiler for people that haven't seen it, but uh, <laughs> it was a great movie, and it was one of those movies where I played a Nazi Hitler clown and won, and then he wanted me to see if if he can direct me to be like a good guy, uh, like kind of like the heart of the movie. Oh, right. And so that's where I met Chaz because Chaz had a cameo in the movie. Yeah. And what was your role in the movie? Uh, I played a guy kind of freaking out on the news about yeah. about how. You know these these once they got caught. You know there were people who were kind of like like we've seen in our country. You know putting killers on a pedestal and yeah. kind of you know fetishizing yeah. them or whatever. And so so I was like somebody saying, no, they're you know these guys are horrible. You know he's the devil or something. Yeah, yeah, I say, yeah. 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 So like just, a, like a protester. I'm just a guy. Yeah, I'm just a guy. Gets stopped by a news you know a news reporter asking my opinion and huh. giving it. Oh god! Yeah, so oh, really I like short. what TMZ did. You do to to you a few <laughs> like a few months ago. Yeah, they do. They find me. Yeah. I always wonder how they get us. You know what I mean? Like I try and drive tinted windows and everything, and I'm like, how do how do you, how do you find me? It or, you know? Yeah. Well, you kind of got like a very noticeable car. The Impala. I didn't no, drive the, the, the Sprinter Impala. van. The Sprinter Van. <laughs> the Sprinter Van is big. <laughs> so enough about me, though. Yeah. Um, Punch tells me you're a big fan of horror movies. Yeah. Is, is that always? Is have you always played? I don't. I know you've been an actor ever since you were younger, and you've well, you've, but no, I didn't. I really didn't. I didn't start working until my late forties. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, was that I, on American Horror Story? Yeah, that was yeah. really the. First, I mean. Um, I did an independent before that, but yeah, that was really the first like big thing I did. So All right. yeah, I mean, I started acting when I was and got really into it as a teen and went to um, a high school in New York called called LaGuardia, which is a performing arts high school. Okay, um, it, it's the you know, school that the movie Fame was based on. And oh uh, no way! Yeah, and awesome. uh, so. Um, you know, so I was really, I was really into it. But yeah, you know, acting is one of the jobs <laughs> that you really have to be comfortable in your skin to do. Totally. And so, you know, I mean, I didn't know what the issue was at the time, but I couldn't play female parts. I didn't know why. Okay. Um, and so I, you know, 
went down different alternate paths. Um, other than that, I mean, I just, I gave it up. I knew I was never going to be able to work professionally um, at that time. Oh, so, so that even had a big impact on your career. Yeah, I mean, then. leaving high school, yeah, I mean, I, I, um, I had gotten into actually NYU film and NYU drama, and I, I ended up going to film school didn't stay because that's not really where my passion was. Okay. Um, you know, but feeling like I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't continue, you know, with a career in, in acting. I just, you know, wasn't going to go anywhere for me. Yeah. You know, what's interesting that, that you say that is my wife like graduated theater school. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they told her in the beginning, like when they're giving the announcement is like, you know, that there's no guaranteed, like when you graduate, this, that you're going to be an actor. Oh, yeah. It's actually one of the hardest professions you could ever try I, I to would like, say we got accomplish and make money from. To you know? yeah, yeah, totally. They would say, they said to us actually something further than that. They would say, if you can do anything else and be, you know, marginally happy, do it. Oh, my gosh. It kind of sounds, I know a lot of chefs in, in restaurants, mm -hmm. and they said the ones that go to school to become chefs, never really become chefs. Interesting. It's the ones, they, they do, they, yeah. they do. But it's the ones that apprentice straight underneath already known chefs that go and make their mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and I feel learn like from that's, the best almost. Yeah, yeah, you learn straight in the trade, you know? Yeah, and I mean, and I would say that to anybody till this day, like if you, you know, if you're not getting into acting because you love acting and there's nothing else you can do, <laughs> don't, don't do it. Yeah. It's so painful. Yeah. You know, the rejection side of this business is so painful that it's, you know, if you're just, if you're doing it because you think, oh, this is a glamorous lifestyle or something, it's not. No, I yeah, get it. You know? No, I get it. Totally. Yeah. It's, 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 a gr it's, a, not, it's a grind of more than a nine to five job. Because you're going to be there on 12-hour days, 13-hour right. days, and if you don't get it right... But it's not even that part. No, the working is great. I mean, getting on set, I think, is great. I yeah. love that part of it. Okay. I'm talking about, it's it's the, wouldn't you agree? I mean, it's all the not working. Yeah, I, 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 I feel it's it like tough. you're you're on a job having a blast, but you're already thinking about, like, what, right. what, what do I do ends? after this? Yep, exactly. Like, <laughs> what, what, what job I go, am I going to have after yeah. this? Like. There's no auditions coming in, right. you know, like, shit, man. Have, How have you ever done or thought of, like, just off-camera theatrical or Broadway or something like that? Or have done, I don't, Sure. I don't know if you have or not. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, that's kind I'm of... I'm coming into this blind. Totally. So so basically what, you know, how I got to where I'm, what I'm doing now is um, in 2012, I ended up just coincidentally getting... Uh, cast uh, with a couple cameos. One was on The Secret Life of the American Teen and one was on Degrassi. And I just, I had fun on both of them. I, you know, I got good feedback from the directors. They were kind of surprised just, you know, how natural and all the, so, um, you know, I, I kind of, you know, thought about it and I talked to one of, one of my closest friends is, a, is a, uh, an agent and a commercial agent. And uh, he's like, why don't you, you know, check out some acting classes and see how it feels. Yeah. And that's what I, I ended up doing. I got back into class and I, uh, you know, that was kind of the first thing I just studied for a while. And then I started doing, you know, local theater kind of. I got, and I, the first thing I got into was a musical theater parody company. Okay. Um, and that was great, except, you know, that's not where I ultimately wanted to go. Yeah. And so I, uh, you know, I ended up more doing more dramatic work. And then I finally... I uh, ended up producing a play that uh, was really, for me, probably one of the most fun I, fun I ever had acting, and that was a, a, a play about um, a husband and wife team that uh, are interviewing a serial killer uh, about to, to write his book. And that that's was just, pretty awesome. Yeah. So that's the serial killer was in jail or on death in, row? Yeah, it was you in jail, and they him. were, okay. yeah. And, and, and so the, the, the whole place, play took place either in their kind of shitty motel room or in the in the prison um, interview room. Oh, that's cool. And it was it was so much fun. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that, you know, theater is a, is a, is is I love I mean I loved it and the energy 
with it is is kind of it's you know, it's so different than than doing film like film or TV. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Where yeah, did, I love that. I mean, I totally I would I would always you know I'm always up for theater. Where did this play? Uh... Um, I I did it on uh, you know there's kind of like a theater row down on Santa Monica yeah. Boulevard. Yep, that, they have yeah. French. Yeah, that. there's a, tons of little little places, so I produced it in one of those little, like, I think seat theaters. If only there was more money in that, you know? Like, yeah. uh, uh, here, like theater, you, you, it's hard to make money. You gotta just straight up do it for the love when you're doing it out here. Yeah. Like, in New York, though, you can, yes. I think you can make a living off of it. I think there's a, there's yeah. actually a union for it out there. You never thought to take it to New York? Wait, no, I'm just asking. No, I mean, for it me, it was really about, um, I, and again, it was just about, at that time, you know, working more, getting seen, trying to get casting directors down there, you know, trying to get agents and managers down there, um, and just trying to get my career started. Yeah, no, it's a good way. Yeah. It's, it sounds, especially coming from your heart, like anything that comes from your heart and not from money. You're going to put everything into it, and yeah. what you want out of it is going to come out, and it sounds like that. That's why I just wondered, why wouldn't you be like, this has been so good here, now let's take it, you know, let's move it on. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, that's kind of a whole other, I think, level. Also doing it here, um, when there's not really a lot of money involved, you know, yep. it's it's easier. You You can... Nobody's really doing it for the money. So the actors, you know, actors out here, a lot of people will work for free. I have done theater for free just to get seen. It's just a whole different, you know, it's just a whole different thing. I would have no idea how to actually produce theater in New York where, you know. <laughs> you're yeah. charging for tickets. Yeah, where well, yeah, well, there's big... real, real money involved. Totally. Huh. That is true love then. That is, yeah. that's for the love of it. And that's amazing. Hey, Chaz, what is your favorite horror movie? Like, being that you're a huge... Exorcist. Exorcist? Yeah. What did, did you like the new one? I haven't seen the new one. Oh, okay. I, I don't... I Because I've just heard so such bad things about it, and since it's, like, my favorite yeah. film, I'll well, probably you can't watch go it on there. TV, yeah. you know? I wouldn't but, go in there com trying to compare it to the first yeah. one. Because it is definitely a sequel, but, like, yeah, there's no comparing it. Like, like the first one is just... It's one it's of my of favorite horror movies. Yeah, too. I mean, it's yeah. it's just a good movie, yeah. regardless of genre. And then it happens to be a horror film. I, like I had no you, no idea that you could use a crucifix in that manner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my favorite is The Shining. Thanks for asking. That, that's a good one too. It's another good <laughs> one. Thanks for that's asking. Like top Punch. five. Yeah, no, I love The Shining. Always been since I was a kid. Yeah, Jack Nicholson's always been one of my favorite. Actors. So you're more into like demonic horror. Like then slasher. I'm not a huge slasher fan. Just okay. just like pure slasher. No, I need I need some kind of story. I need some something kind of some kind of like psychological yeah. kind of yeah yeah. I mean any. I don't need a, a lot, but I mean just like I never really got into the straight just slashers. Yeah. Like, you know the the numerous Friday the Thirteenth and stuff like that <laughs> as a as a I kid. Know. You know, like just. Yeah, I mean, like the the originals and stuff, I could get into. But when it just becomes about like, let's just kill number nine, the, number yeah, ten, right. let's just kill number eleven, let's just teen, kill teenage <laughs> girls and have no story whatsoever. Yeah, I'm always into like origin stories of I, like slasher films, like like the origin story of like like why Leatherface is the way he is, how he became that mm -hmm. way, how he was raised, like things like that interest me rather than just going around and killing yeah. anything that's in front of you. That was the yeah. first one that popped in my head. I was like, whoa, he said it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the Texas. The, yeah. yeah, I mean, I Another love Texas. the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. It's a yeah. great movie, but I don't look at it as just, you know, these films that started, we really saw in the 80s that were just straight up slasher. Oh, there. yeah. <laughs> uh, the thing I like, I'm not a horror fan person. Like, mm -hmm. that's not my, I'm a comedy or kind of a, like, more alternative kind of movie guy. But the one thing I love about horror movies is it doesn't it it gets right to the point where they're gonna kill and then it moves and the rest is your imagination. Yeah, and that's one thing I've always loved that you're just a little bit a part of that because of that moment. You know, do you, do you like horror comedy though? Do you like that mix? Like in what way? 
What, do you like like you know that that genre? Like do you like horror comedy? Like, no. like scary movie, like, like kind of no, parodies. No, parodies. No, I, no. Like, like I hate what I, we do in the shadows or something. I like hate that. parodies. What we no. do in the shadows is awesome. You I gotta... hate those movies. <laughs> I, I don't like. It's not like I hate. It's a not my movie. <laughs> well, now I know not to invite you to one of my premieres. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go because I'll support my bro. But that's as bad as far as he goes to support me for a yeah. lot of my stand up comedy yeah. and stuff. So it's kind of cool. Um. So you didn't get into horror films till later in life. Um, I know. I mean, I watched them growing up as course. a kid and stuff like that, like everybody does. But yeah, I think I got more and more into them as I got older. And then um, as, a, as an actor, I, I kind of really made a, a conscious choice to go in that direction um, because I think I, I kind of found a home there where I could you know, consistently work and also... Um, I really like the, you know, I, I I like playing, you know, weird and different types of characters. And I just think horror, you know, really lends itself. What, to what were you in American Horror Story? What character? Well, what I just... played two characters. The first season I was uh, a meth-selling uh, cannibal yeah. hillbilly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then... The, but what, the, the, the one that I'm talking about second, where you're wearing that. Yeah, I was a uh, a cult member who was a... A Trump fanatic. <laughs> yeah, Trump fanatic. That's a cult <laughs> member that was yeah. a Trump fanatic. Yeah, yeah, that's what I saw you in. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, it's, it's and, and he, this dude was committed. So yeah. committed. You did yeah. it so good, Thank Jazz. You. But, okay. You're in this horror world, but mm -hmm. I also saw you like in one of my favorite episodes of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Thank you. And this guy's character was amazing. Okay. And you were really funny with it. Really funny. Was that like a crazy transition? Because I know the way they film, it's like bullet points, right. no script, just get to this place. You guys are improving it. Was that, was it that? It was really, I mean, it was fun. It was, yeah. it was kind of different, yeah. totally. And, um, and uh, I wouldn't say challenging. It was just really different, but I had a great time. I mean, I'm working with amazing, obviously. Yeah, Larry, Larry, with Larry David. David. Um, and he was, he was, I mean, he was, he was actually really great to work with, really generous. Um, it was a, it was a, it was a He's like, that Joey. His name was Joey in it. <laughs> um, Did he really say that? Was he really yeah. excited about your character? He was, yeah, he, he was, was really fun. I mean, he was, he was good. It, it was a, it was a really good experience. Well, you're good at comedy, man. You should think yeah. about that too, because sometimes, you know, I, my wife always tells me, cause I get, uh, I get cast for a lot of horror films and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And it's hard to get comedy once you're pigeonholed into that genre. But she is always like, just, just yeah. embrace it, dude. Embrace it. Eventually other stuff will come. So like, yeah, I mean, just to know that you, you have that other yeah. avenue to fall down, like when it comes to acting and you're, you're good at it. Dude. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I enjoy comedy. I mean, it feels like there's, they're kind of similar really in, in a sense in that I just think, in both genres, you you have to commit. You know, you really have to commit and kind of. Um, it's not, I don't want to say. Say you it. can be. No, I was <laughs> going to say be, you know big or, but it's not that. You just have to be bold, and that's what I think I like about both yeah. of them. Is that you make you can make big bold decisions. Absolutely. And um, and and that's what I really enjoy. What's the latest project you're working on right now? Um, uh, I've got if you a, can talk about sure, it. Sure, yeah. Uh, I've got a, a project right now in, in, uh, in post called Little Bites that we shot um, in, in June, this past June. Uh -huh. um, it's, it's my second uh, f uh, project with um, One Fox Productions, which is uh, Spider One and Christy Fox's production. We made a film together last year. came out. It's called Bury the Bride. Okay. And uh, you can watch it for free on Tubi, and and now it's all on all the VOD stuff and and Amazon and Apple TV. And all yeah, that yeah, stuff. yeah. So, um, so yeah, so this is the second one we did, and and it's. Did you write it? No, no. Those guys, those okay. guys do all the writing, and okay. and I just act and and help uh, produce. So two bites. Uh, little bites. Oh, little bites. Yes. Is that a vampire movie? No, it's not. Okay. It's it is. Um, it is about a widow who has um, 
a monster living in her house that has convinced her to sacrifice herself slowly to him in order to protect her 10-year-old daughter, basically. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. That's a good one. It's it's really interesting. It's it's much, it's kind of slower and more methodical, and it's very cool. And what is, uh, uh, and you said that, what was the production company, Chrissy's production? Oh, the uh, Spider and Chrissy's production yeah. company is One Fox. One Fox. Yeah. Uh, Spider is Rob Zombie's brother, who is also a musician uh, and has a band. Okay. Yeah. Got it. All coming together. Um, are you writing anything or getting ready to, if, just curious for another no. project? No? no mm -mm, not now, no. Uh -uh. Just um, really just focusing on, on acting and producing right now. Yeah. Got it. Are you going out still on auditions? Um, just curious. Or yeah, sure. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I do. I don't, it seems like I don't get a lot of auditions. Uh, you know, I get some, I don't, I've never gotten a ton. Yeah. And I've never gotten a ton of work from auditions, even though I audition well. Um, but most of your gigs are like, we want you and this yeah. is relationships Art. that you've built. Yeah. 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 No, I get it. I've seen it happen that way. Yeah. It's good. I'm just curious. Do you go out on auditions? punch or are you I, I just do self taste but I haven't had one for a while yeah but so uh, most same. of mine most of mine are either uh, relationships that I've built or 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 I book like a self tape like, yeah got it yeah. awesome but uh, usually self tapes are like just 90% like just failed auditions <laughs> that you don't even know if they even watch them it's true <laughs> like you get no feedback you get no, it's nothing. hard it's kind of, yeah it's the hollywood it's the hollywood way to do it yeah, I, realize. I always yeah. say that i booked a lot more when i did them up close and personal i think it yeah i mean i like that so much better because yeah you had relate you know you you got to know people you had relationships they knew you they knew your work they you know you feel the room you, too. yeah you could feel the room so yep. um I, I liked it the old way a lot better. No, like like when I auditioned for um for the Rob Zombie movie, like it was like you're just a clown that's torturing somebody, and I was like, and and it was when they were uh, before self tapes, and I remember being at the audition and like and you're listening up to the other actors and they're just yelling and screaming, and then the casting director, as soon as I go in there. She just looks at me and says, whatever you do, just please don't yell and scream the whole time. And I'm like, that's something I would have right. never known unless I went to the audition up close and personal. I mean, that I wasn't going to do that anyway, but like, yeah, like that's helpful. And that you paid attention and heard all the other yeah, ones. Yeah, that, the yeah, the other people failing. Yeah. She gave, <laughs> she gave you a little, she yeah. opened the door. She let your foot in the door yeah. for a moment. That's, all, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like you feel the room. You hear what the what the producers want, mm -hmm. and then you give it to them that way. Absolutely. Yeah. No, yeah. it was much better that way. Totally. <laughs> yeah, because you also got to show too, which is important, is that you know you can you can adjust. Yeah. You can take the, their adjustment. You know, because some actors can't. They they rehearse it one way, and they get that's all they they've locked it in. That's all they can do. So yeah. to be able to like do it, and they're like, no, they really want blah 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 blah. Will you do it like that? Sure. Yep, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. Do you you have any hobbies or anything you're into that like outside of the world that you uh, know that uh, people might not know? Favorite things you like to do? Um I I like to yo yo. I no collect yo yo's. That's yeah, I remember that. that I like to do. Um I build I like kind of build watches out of uh I mean I don't build the actual movements, but I, I put together watches. So you'll uh, get all the parts. Get you, used all to, the parts. You, you used to do the keychains too. You used to make yeah, the keychains. Yeah, yeah, I can I was I with this anodizing titanium, yeah. I I go through different I I yeah, I always have things that I'm doing. Tinkering. Um, you like tinkering like the, yeah. and stuff. Uh and then I like I I've, I've always you know gamed. Uh video gamer? Video game, yeah. Do you stream video game? Um like live like what most people are doing these sure, days. Sure, I mean on certain things like I mean I you know like I play Destiny 2 a lot. I mean both Destiny games, um Elder Scrolls online, stuff like that. Yeah. I'm not, I don't do PC gaming though. I've always been a Are you a video game? Not you one bit. I never got in. My brothers were really into video games. But, but I, I see it a lot it. on social media. You yeah. see and and it's crazy the level it's gone where 
uh, people are now like live and taking, they're, they're using the platform of video games and then taking it to another level. And you're like, okay. They're making we're, money off. Like, yeah. No, they are. Like, their people are making. Like when I used to work for Monster Energy, yeah. I remember like we, we used to do deliveries to like places that were going to have these big, big gaming competitions and we like deliver Palace. Monster to yeah. like the, 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 the gamers. Yeah. Like they were like all sponsored by it. It's like, that's so crazy. Yeah, that's a little, str I mean, as much as I love gaming, that's one thing I've never understood, the people who go and watch gaming People play video people games. games. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't do that. I would lose it. I would, I'd be like, what am I doing? <laughs> It's not, it wouldn't be like the, like the old days where you used to play Street Fighter and your buddy's just doing the same move to get you and he won't, like, and he won't stop doing that yeah. move. You're like, all right, stop it, stop <laughs> it. And he just keep doing the move until you die. <laughs> you're like, that's not even fucking fair, dude. <laughs> if he gets you in a hole. Yeah, you he just gets I mean? you in the hole. He's just doing the kick, the same kick over and over again. <laughs> uh, um. You're pretty much the same age as us. I'm 50, 48. You're in 50s. I'm going to, yeah, going to be 55 soon. Nice. Oh, you can move in one of those places where they don't even allow kids in. <laughs> where you're just like, nope, I live here 55 and older. And just be the like, right new person. And be like, no kids, no noise. <laughs> um, do you think you're going to continue? It, it's, it's a love. I still skateboard. Mm -hmm. I love it. Do you think you're going to continue acting and pursuing, you know, films for uh, a while? Oh, yeah. Totally. Awesome. I mean, it's it's what I love to do. So, um, for sure. Best movie set you've ever been on that you were like, I can't believe we filmed this today. This is why I do it. I want to remember this forever. Hmm. Where you're like, yeah, I'm you, I mean, there's, you, there's you felt like stuff. I made it, you know? Well, feeling like I made it, that kind of thing was probably American Horror Story just because it's like being on that set. It's what you think of as like making, you know, it's like all the the bells and whistles that you, you know, the big trailers and the, yeah. you know, all the huge sets and you're getting taken care craft of. Craft service. Yeah, insane. craft, yeah, meals, you, you know, lunch. I mean, every, it's like, it's the height of, of it's the penthouse exactly. of, making, of being totally. an actor. Yeah. Um, but like I've had, I mean, making Barry the Bride also to me was like amazing because it was very much um, the, the uh, an ensemble piece. We were all together pretty much all the time, the whole cast. Uh, it was a tight cast. It was, you know, everybody that was in the movie was had either worked with Spider and Chrissy before on their projects or I had worked with. Um, the, the male lead I was able to get, uh, 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 who's brilliant and a really good friend of mine, somebody who I met literally on my first day of acting class and became like very good friends with. So that was amazing. So it was just, it was, it was fun. It was just like, you know, we roughed it, yeah. but it was really fun. Roughing it sometimes. Sometimes yeah. is great. Yeah. yeah. You're like, you know, out of this little bit that we have, we're in this hut. And we're gonna make something that's gonna be on the big screen. Yeah, is mind blowing and fun too. You're thinking like, that's a we did it moment. Totally. Yeah. I wanted to ask Chaz because at least for me in my experience with acting, being pigeonholed into something like horror, but like other stuff like like for me it's like the troll right. or the or or the elf or just stereotypical parts like that. Does that happen to you with being a trans? No, Trans I mean, man, I don't like know ever, if, or do you, or or do you, tr do you just ride it, or do you like, you know, because it's a gig. Right. At the end of the so, day, it's just it's business. So here's the thing: I don't. Um, I mean, I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse because I, I, I wouldn't. I don't think I'd be happy just playing trans parts. That's, I mean, yeah. I'm, I, you know, consider myself a character actor, so I want to be as far away from myself as possible. Yeah, and you got the work to show it too. Yeah, um, but that's part of why. I went towards horror. It doesn't seem to matter as much. In it's so basically, I, I'm in this kind of. I find myself in a weird position. I I don't know what our industry thinks trans people look like. 
mm -hmm. but it's not, or trans men look like, but it's not me. Um, so I don't get asked to audition for trans parts mm. for the most part. Do you, can, can, I, can I say something to you? I don't sure. think I ever told you this, but when I first met you and we were hanging out, I, I never even knew. I didn't know your story yeah. or any of that. And I don't know if you saw that or, <laughs> but no. my wife, His like, had wife to tell told me. him. She's like, because she was a huge fan. I'm like, okay. no, this is Chaz. And she told me. I was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> I said, that's yeah. probably yeah. why Chaz befriended you. <laughs> you felt so natural. Right? No, look, and I mean, that's how all my, especially anybody that, you know, didn't know me before, especially, it's, it always, you know, I'll say something that, you know, will, will indicate, you know, that I was born in a female body and there, it always trips, you know, them out. Like, oh shit, I forgot. Right. Okay. Um, but so, yeah, so I don't, I don't get, you know, offers to audition for very many trans parts. I mean, obviously the, the curb was, and, and that was, you know, great and fun. I was happy to do that. Um, and and then I think the flip side of it is when I audition for you know larger, more mainstream stuff, cisgender parts. You know I think I I put in great auditions, but I think there's also this idea in Hollywood. Well, why should I cast? It's not a trans part. Why should I cast this guy? You know. No, there. I don't. I so, don't feel like it, there's that. Oh, is there? Oh, yeah, yeah, there is. Dude. Oh, dude. Really? Yeah. yeah. There oh, really wow. is. Well, that's so, one of the things that, like, so, even, even with, like, uh, there's a Ricky Gervais special, and he talks about how, like, now, like, people are going back to, like, the Stephen Hawkins movie and, and, and kind of going, why wouldn't you just ha hire a person with that disability to play Stephen Hawkins? And his whole joke is, well, you could, but then what about when you're shooting the part before right. his disability, when he was a normal man? Yes. It wouldn't work that way. And that's kind of the whole joke behind it. Like, as far as, like, like why wouldn't you just hire a trans person to play a trans person? Why are you hiring someone that's not trans? That's the whole idea nowadays, right? Yeah, and they've gotten pretty good at, at, at hiring trans people to play trans parts. Yeah. But, yeah, but they haven't started to think, well, huh, we could hire, you know, there's no reason we can't hire this guy to, I mean, that's all I've ever played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, well, other than on Curb, is cisgender roles. Um, but, you know. But it goes back to why did they hire, uh, what's his name, to be a little person? Yeah. Well, that's the thing, too. Like, what I wanted to say about that is with the, the movie El Maestro, that, is, that, is that what it's called? The, the Bradley Cooper movie where he plays a conductor. It's a beautiful movie. But anyways, the Jewish community had this big thing because he put on a prosthetic nose. They gave him like a prosthetic nose and they made it about like, oh, he's having a Jewish nose, a Jew nose. That's what they said. And, it's, and, it, and they made it yeah. this whole big ordeal. But then you add our arms and legs to Hugh Grant, which is, <laughs> right. and that's, that's absolutely fine. That's, that, they're cool with that, you know, yeah. but like, midge, midge what, limbs. What, yeah, <laughs> midge limbs to them. And, and, and it's just like one of those things. It's like, how is, how do you, like, why is one okay, but what, but the other one is like, oh, you can't do that. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. You know, like how, how far it's come and how far it's gotten, you know, as far as that aspect of it. Yeah, my wheels are just turning. That's why I'm sitting for a sec. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't. I don't know how you. I'll tell you how I feel, and I don't know how you feel. In a perfect please world, please tell me because this is. Yeah, sure. This, no, this in is a, what we want. In a know. perfect world, I'd like to with, and I'll, I'll just address the trans stuff because that's. Um, I would like to see you know, anybody be able to play any part other than than males playing trans females, that's just reinforces a stereotype that trans women are just men in dresses. So yeah. other than that, I mean, I think everybody should have the experience, um, you know, to, to play different people as actors, that's what we do. Um, but until, until that happens, until like trans people are allowed to play cis people, what I are... think it's really important that they cast Tra uh, trans actors in trans roles. Mm -hmm. What are Until cis there's people? equity. Dumb it down for me. What sure, that's everybody who's not trans. 
That's what they call them, cis. Oh wow, I did. Uh, that's so we're cis. Yeah. No, we're midges. <laughs> Accept it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. no, I, I get that aspect of it. No, I get it you too. Know? Like I always feel like even like with with roles like where they have someone as an amputee, they're like someone that's missing a leg that's playing right. a veteran. I'm like, there's lots of veteran actors that you that you could like at least like audition to yeah. like and and then they immediately choose to just go with someone that has both legs but like right. they're putting a green screen and like removing his legs i get the star aspect of it to, to bring pe people to the film but you also want to give opportunities to like possibly the next greatest actor you know yeah hmm. <laughs> so you grew up in the spotlight though with, with parents like uh Cher and sonny bono and stuff and you always had your picture and stuff taken, like, w w with no consent. Would would that be different now? Like, uh, do you do like? I, mean, I, 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 do you feel like things would be different for you if that didn't happen? Oh, um, I have no. I mean, I have no idea. I mean, I just always. I mean, you were in the spotlight. Yeah, you know, yeah. stars are blocking their kids and don't like. Want don't, this. don't put the kids' oh, spotlight on like, now again. Right. I the have, star is the star. Right. And their kids are a whole different thing. He's saying, "Yeah, you grew up, and mom right. and dad, yeah, were you the didn't stars. have a say. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. But totally. mom and dad were like, boom. but it was different. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. And, ah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's I, I have no idea. It's so hard to, to. I mean, this has just been my life, and it was such a different time then that I don't think anybody it's not of the of same no social norms. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely right. not. And you want to know the craziest thing hmm. is like." When I was hanging out with you and I knew your mom was Cher, I remember one time he was on the phone and he was like, Shh, I, I, I'm on the phone with my mom. And I'm like, he's on the phone with Cher. <laughs> like, you know, it was just one of those things. I was so starstruck by that, it was, which is so it's weird. still his mom, though. Yeah, no, and exactly. Be, yeah. 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 Um, it's same topic, but a little, so uh, Bruce Jenner. Mm -hmm. always felt like he was a woman and he and he was an athlete mm -hmm. and he, when he came out he said and he became a woman but he was like trans men that become you know women shouldn't compete in sports because their bodies are still built differently yeah i don't really agree with much that caitlin jenner says the, okay so yeah, they, Caitlin says it now, but y you know, yeah. I I get it. So you feel you feel different about like that way. So you would you say a man that becomes a woman to to I, Caitlin's extent could compete in sports? In my opinion, yes, totally. Oh. And and in in uh, college sports and in and, professional, uh, not professional, but college and. The Olympics, they they allow people to compete after, um, you know, after a certain amount of time uh, on on hormones. Got it. In fact, trans women actually have less testosterone than cisgender women. Ah, okay. Didn't know that one. Got Why it. is that? Um, it's because they take blockers. Um, and so they they literally have like zero testosterone usually, and and you know cisgender we, we, all of us all people you know have a little bit of both sex hormones in them. It's just you know men have way more testosterone and a little estrogen, and and the opposite with women. Yeah. Speaking of sports, were you ever into any sports? Um, you know, I mean, I I liked playing sports and stuff as a kid a lot. But what was the sport you liked? Football was probably my favorite. Nice. Yeah. But then I think, you know, I got I got into acting before high school, so and my you know, we didn't have really sports. We had I, I I my sport was I, I liked football too. And at one point I, I played flag football and it was like in sixth grade. Uh huh. And I was always used like I played like a running back. But the the, the coach liked me because uh my flag was really low to the ground. Okay. <laughs> so like these, they would use me as a secret weapon where I only had to run like, you know, maybe like 20 yards or mm -hmm. something. 
and someone would be blocking me, but they could never get my flag. That makes a lot of but sense. But then once it got a little older and it was like tackle, I'm like, I ain't playing this shit. <laughs> I'll That's die. A good one. I didn't know that about you, Punch. Yeah, well, now you know. Yeah. I learned about bathhouse and you, and you learned yep. about me and flag football. Yeah. yeah. Well, you want to go now. <laughs> yeah, now I'm I not going to, go to the bathhouse. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds so relaxing. <laughs> I'm not going and playing flag football now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, neither am I. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that's learned something new today. Uh, that's interesting. I didn't. I didn't. I. It's understandable. I get it. It's just like taking melatonin, the pill. It blocks your own natural melatonin. So now you're. So to take a testosterone blocker, makes it even less than what your body produces. Yeah. Pretty crazy. I get yeah. it. The <laughs> science, the, the, there's a lot of science behind it. Yeah. Yeah. You've been Chaz for many years and being on I've the- I've been Chaz my whole life. Yeah, Chaz your whole life. For the community though, becoming, you know, coming out mm -hmm. and do it, do you feel very uh, at the forefront of it? before majority of people really like put it out or are you just kind of do you feel as just you're right in the middle of it and just accepting it as it is i don't honestly think about that kind of stuff now. yeah no, i mean I like it. at the i mean when i transitioned it well uh, i started uh it was 15 years ago almost okay um and you know at that time there were you know there were a lot of uh, guys who had, who had transitioned and, you know, that's how I knew about it. And there were, you know, mentors and, and people that I talked to and, um, and that were incredibly helpful and supportive. And I think, you know, in that 15 years, a, a lot has changed, but yeah. When um, you, when you say mentors, were they also other people that transitioned? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. Before Tra you? Okay. Trans guys. Yeah. Okay. Trans guys who had been transitioned for a long time that, um, you know, that were, that I could, yeah, that I talked to and were helpful and stuff like that. And, um, so yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think I really have ever thought about it in, in terms of, of that. I, you know, I knew, all I know is that, you know, for me, I, I knew that I was trans for almost 10 years before I transitioned and that was, you know. So was that was, in your 20s? No, I was in my third. I I just, I transitioned at forty, so I was mm -hmm. in my thirties, and um, and that was just a really, you know, hard time for me of 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 knowing this thing and not feeling that I had the courage or the strength to to do what I needed. That, to that do. must be tough, man. Yeah. And like, did your did your did your mom know? Did your parents know? Did uh, anybody? Well, know? my dad was already dead. By okay. Then. Um, my mom. I mean, she did when I, you know, before I transitioned, um, we had little conversations. We had a big conversation before, you know, about six months or so before I transitioned. Um, but there were some people that knew, but I, I felt like I had to be really quiet about it because I, I didn't want it coming out in the tabloids um, beforehand. So Were you afraid, like, since it was... Long, uh, 20 years ago or 15 years ago, were you afraid of losing friends out of it? Well, or it wasn't that? even. You have to, you know, I, I, I figured it out, started figuring it out. Before, that's when I actually transitioned. Uh. So, you know, I was dealing with it in, in the, you know, the 2000s and yeah. stuff. So, um, yeah, I thought, I thought I would lose everything. Damn. And I thought I would, I would lose that's like, yeah. friends. I thought I would, you know, at that time I worked in uh, LGBTQ politics, but back then it was just pretty much, you know, they just pretty much focused on the lesbians and gays at that time. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I thought I wouldn't, I thought I wouldn't have work. I thought I would, you know, lose the respect of the community. I thought I'd lose everything. Family, friends, you name it. 15 years later now, do you feel like you gained more? Um, I gain just because he said he felt like he was oh, going to lose. I thought I would lose. Of course, I was one hundred percent wrong. I now, lost yeah. nothing. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't. Um, 
it's almost like you create not created a movement because it was already there, but oh, you were like I, a, more of a public figure that. Again, I it's of, hard for me to even. I mean, I'm I really you know I, I hope that I I helped people. I, I I tried to I you know I did a documentary about my transition. I wrote a book, um, but it's hard to look at it in public terms for me. I mean, private. It's just all I can say is that, you know, the life that I lived before and 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 the life that I lived after. I mean, it, it it's just it's it's um sorry I'm I'm having problems with coming up with words today. Uh, Don't worry, mean, I forgot someone's name in the last podcast. <laughs> and it's like a uh, huge name, and I'm such an idiot. It's okay. No, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, um, I was, I didn't know how, I mean, I knew things were bad for me, I, 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 but I had no idea how difficult and tough life was until I had something to compare it to. Okay. And, um, yeah, I mean, it just, everything... I, be, I, I finally became myself. Yeah. You know, I mean, I yeah, must have felt so good. Yeah. It's just, I was just, oh you know, gosh. living in, in a body that didn't reflect how I felt, how I saw myself inside, who I was, anything. And, you know, you think you know that it's affecting everything, but it literally affects everything. Yeah. Um, so I'd say it's a hard thing to, to have, you know, to explain to people because it's, it's such a unique experience, and, and really the best thing I can say is to just have people try to imagine what it would feel like to wake up, you know, in the morning in the body of the opposite gender, but feeling exactly the same as you do, and how unbelievably uncomfortable that would be. I feel like just hearing it from you and hearing it from other people, to me it sounds like you're almost in a coffin where your head's just peeking out but you're stuck in the coffin and when you finally do it it's like you just busted through the coffin and you're here now now everybody knows that. yeah i mean it's just like everybody you and you know you just feel like you're finally you know everyone you encounter is you know you're able to relate to you know comfortably yeah, I you know everywhere you go, kind of you're you're just more. It's just you're just comfortable. You're just comfortable in your skin. You're comfortable around people. You're just for the first time, really comfortable, and you just feel, you know, right. I mean, like well, as soon as I started using, you know, taking testosterone, my body just like I was like, oh God, this just feels like right. Like this is what's. It's just it's it's crazy. Do you go out and uh, help others that are struggling with it? Do you? Do you? I. I mean, because you're in a position that sure. people know you, and it's like us. Like uh, there's other little people in the world, right? And it's a it's a difficult thing to be a little person in the public eye, and especially in nowadays society. A lot of people get teased. There's a yeah. big tease, and that's. That's a big thing for a little person. Mm -hmm. And I've been approached where people come to me and they say, hey, can you just encourage my son or say some beautiful words or something? Sure. And that alone coming from me to another little person, which granted, I, I get like the position I put myself in to be able to do this. It even makes me feel good oh, yeah. that now I've done this. Do you like... Because you, you seem very private to me, and you seem like you're very, like, I did, this is me, this is what I do, I'm very private, and stuff, but do you do that for other transgender men that, sure. that are, I, I've, I've like, really, younger ones? Yeah, younger I've ones, focused, they feel Yeah, like, I was going to say, I've, I have focused more on, on youth, yeah. so I, I have, um, uh, up uh, until, really, the pandemic, I, I worked with a, um, an organization, um, that uh, is called Transforming Family, and we work with um, families that have trans youth in it. We work the whole whole family. There's uh, parents groups, uh, uh, peer supported groups for the trans kids. There's um, siblings groups. It's a really great organization. So oh wow! I've been That's involved amazing. with that for a very long time. What's that called? Just it's so called Transforming Family. So people that listening, yeah, if they it's you, it's based in for it. in here in Los Angeles. 
Uh, you can go to the, our website and check it out. And um, transforming family. Transforming family. Yes. Dot com. Dot org. Dot org. Yep. Okay. Um, and I've also just had a lot of people kind of reach out to me too, strangely, that I've, you know, friends of, a, a lot of, a lot of friends who have been like, I, you know, uh, a, a sibling, uh, a friend of theirs or whatever, can you talk to, they have a, you know, a kid who, who's just coming out as trans to them. Do you mind talking? Yeah. So I've done that. I've done that a lot. Yeah. Really a lot. And I'm always happy, you know, to do that. What is the, what is the thing that you say to them? Like that, that like the, the one thing that you say to them to kind of like, kind of keep them going. Is that there... gives just that little spark where you're like, okay, I said it. I got it. Right. I want to, I mean, it's, I want to be realistic with, you know, it, well, it depends on who I'm talking to. If I'm talking to a kid or a parent. Okay. Because it's really, it's very different. So, yeah. um, you know, with kids, usually they've been, you know, they've been figuring themselves out. They've been online. They've been, you know, they've been at it for a while by the time the, the parents, the find, parents out. find out, right? Yep. So they're pretty clear on who they are. Yes. But the parents are finding out now kind of for the first time. And yeah. they're, you know, so. It's a new. It's, it's a, a new, new thing. And I mean, you know, I've only talked to, you know, to parents who are, um, you know, supportive, but, you know, just trying to figure this thing out. I, you know, nobody, nobody, I've, I've you know, I've never had to convince somebody who, um, but, uh, you know, just, so I'm just really trying to kind of educate, educate the parents on, you know, what that experience is, is like for the kid, what they've, you know, likely been going through. There's always that, and also, you know, with kids, everything feels like forever. Yeah. So, yes, <laughs> you know, so they're like once, you know, so a lot of these kids, they're figuring it out and they're they want it you now know, and they want it exactly. And so kind of, you know, that's a lot of that with the group that we did because we had kids at all different phases and we had, did have kids that were transitioning. And then like new kids would come in and be like, you know, free. You know, it's like, you know, you got to let your parents, you know, be in the group and figure stuff out and be you know, get educated and all of this stuff. And, you know, you're going to get there eventually. It's a process. It's a process, right. Yep. It's a process of education education for everybody and making the right medical decisions for you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with your parents and your doctors. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I think that's the kind of things. I also try to tell parents, because unfortunately the scary part of this is that, you know, a lot of uh, trans kids have, you know, either attempted or been successful at suicide. Yeah. And that's something that I try to, you know, let the parents know because if they don't take their kids seriously and this situation seriously, that is something that could happen. So I yes. try to encourage them to really, you know, get on on it, get get into, you know, therapy, whatever they need to do take to, it. to take it, but to take it seriously. Yes, exactly. No, it's a big thing. Yeah, I've seen it too. So yeah, Chaz, man, what a story you got! <laughs> and wow, like we're running, like we're we're just about out of time. But we could talk to you, yeah, forever for a whole another three episodes. Yeah, man. <laughs> you're yeah. always welcome back on our show Thank too. You. Yeah, like what? Let us know. Let's plug in what 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 things you're working out now. What uh, what uh, what people should look out for your movie? Sure. Yeah. So probably the next. Well, I mean, right now I've got. Two things out, uh, which is that they can see, which is um, uh, Bury the Bride. And then I've got another movie uh, that I, I'm just an actor. I'm not a producer called The Bell Keeper. Which the is, Bell Keeper. Yeah, which okay. is also a lot of fun. And then they could watch these on Amazon? Uh, yeah, totally. Okay. Uh, yeah, any Bur the, Bury the Bride? Bury the Bride. Okay, like bury her. Bur okay. Bury, bury her. Bury her. Bury her in the ground. Bury Six her in the ground. Under. Yep. Bury the Bride. <laughs> Bury the Bride and the Bell Keeper. And the Bell Keeper. Yeah. Look out for right. that so on Amazon. That. You can and, watch that. And then up, you know, coming, probably the next thing will probably be out will be Little Bites. Little Bites. Little yeah. There we go. And then. Uh, we'll, that was with people I know. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll be doing uh, more, you know, more, more films this year. So. Yeah. Sweet. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do something together. I would love that. We got to do something I together, know. man. We could do like a buddy comedy or a horror film, whatever. Yeah. 
Or, I or a buddy that. comedy just, horror film. Buddy comedy horror film. There we go. I see yeah. that happening. <laughs> and I want to see you two working on it. Yeah, we will. Um, yeah. It was really good to have you on. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, thank you for here. coming Chaz, and doing seriously. that with us. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for having Chaz. There's Punch. I'm Wee Man. And don't forget, our only sponsor, NEMA, N-I-I-M-A. It's a very healthy, natural supplement. It's mainly just vitamins and herbs. It's really good. I take them. I kick Ponch's butt all the time because I take them. Go there in the coupon area, put L-I-L-R-E-V and get 15% off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great one. Thank you again, Chaz. Thank you, guys.